Welcome all. Now, after my look at HDR 4K and the revolution that is the new TV devices hitting our screens, or at least our homes this year, I'm now going to take a look at video games specifically, A, because that's what my channel's about, and B, because I think it deserves its own section. Now, all this talk of HDR consoles and TVs could leave many confused with gaming as it has been using HDR for a very long time. And although this is true, it's not quite as straightforward as this, and much is due to the display panels and how we actually view images. High dynamic range is the term used to describe more detail across the darkest and brightest range, which of course includes colour. Now, even though much of the games industry, 3D modelling and rendering as a whole has adopted this for some time, they have to manage this for the intended display type. Now, in short, this means that HDR in both PC titles and consoles is only emulated or adjusted from a linear space into a non-linear one using gamma correction. But this article will explain it in detail and what this means and how it will actually change. Now, movies and TVs are separate to this and you can check out more information in my new HDR 4K in-depth article on my site and on the channel but games need to be explained separately. When materials and objects are created, they all have to take into account the display type it will be viewed on. With PBR becoming the standard and where HDR really shines, it is arguably a necessity for it to work at all. This means that many games now have to create objects, materials, light and darkness within a linear workflow, which corrects or adjusts the luminance for each scene. I covered this in detail with my Metal Gear Solid 4 analysis. You can check that out on my channel and on the site. This is then corrected or tone mapped so that the colours, whites and blacks all fall within the SDR display. If this did not happen, you would have whites that blinded you and become overblown and dark areas with no detail at all, as seen on screen. Now this is done by adjusting the peak level within the range of the actual display, as in reality, a sun glare would make you squint just a little bit. Now as this process is usually clamped with a floating point value of 0.0, .0 and 1.0 between darkest and light, it is also non-linear, with a short tail on both edge cases of these values. The new REC 2020 standard with which HDR displays conform, which improves this greatly, but it's still not at the actual level the eye can perceive and process mind. All the same though, it is one of the biggest increases in visual clarity we have experienced in many years, with games in particular benefiting greatly from its vastly expanded range and improved gamut. Now due to the lower nit levels of the displays, detail cannot be displayed as well as the created base material and although it is more precise, it does not match the original target. This means that levels are clamped so that beyond the sRGB or Rec 709 range, everything becomes the same, no matter how near or far from that it strays. But the adjustment compensates for this and has to form part of your entire pipeline, which the new HDR displays have now changed. This new range is bigger, and although the standard can hit 10,000 nit levels, we only have consumer displays that can target 1,000 nits at present. This is still a magnitude higher and wider than what SDR displays or HDTVs have conformed to mind. It will come as no surprise then that a game will not simply display fine in HDR mode if the rendering has not been changed to do so also. So current games that have this tone mapping and clamping in place will not automatically benefit from this update. They will in fact look exactly the same. But games can have a HDR mode added that could increase the depth and detail of the image, something Crystal Dynamics, Nixis and Nvidia have done with Rise of the Tomb Raider, which you can read more about on the link in the video and on the site. This requires changes to the game's rendering and final output to better emulate the detail and depth in the scene, meaning that the loss of detail of white and black before can now be displayed with a larger gamut along with reds, greens and blues. Every shot, every material and colour will benefit from this giving much better and more realistic skin tones, vivid colours and even though brighter bloom areas or darker sections will improve the most, this will enhance the entire scene at all times. Now both the Xbox One S and Scorpio support HDR outputs and both Gears of War 4 and Horizon 3 will have full HDR rendering output support on the Xbox One S along with supported GPUs on PC release also and I'm sure many games will add this. The new PS4 Neo will almost certainly add this function and again it will enhance newer titles that as of October this year all games from first party or third party will have to add a Neo mode 
which means enhanced support to take advantage of the extra hardware boost. So you can expect Horizon, Last Guardian, Battlefield 1 and the sumptuous God of War and many more to all have HDR enabled rendering options added for the new machine in addition to other enhancements. Now just like movies, games will also need to be remastered and or have this extra rendering option added and I'm sure it will be one of the Neo requirements as we approach its actual reveal but I'll cover that in my upcoming hardware analysis. The requirement to maximise and impress the viewer will reside far more with these kind of improvements over pixel increases. Anyone who has watched or played HDR content can confess that it improves and impresses more than the leap from 1080 to 4K and as such will become another change to game developers workflows having both an SDR and HDR range display mode within their engines. Now examples of this will benefit how games can be seen are in the video here and although there are far from ideal it does demonstrate the loss of detail that still occurs with current methods and display types offering up a more precise and wider scope to artists, designers and effects teams will only empower them to create richer, more dynamic and realistic worlds across all supported hardware. The only downside is that original Xbox One and PS4 owners, along with the majority of PC GPUs, will miss out on this new display type, but I doubt it will become the lion's share of titles over the next few years. Now it's just a welcome benefit and an enticing lure to make more owners think about upgrades or that eventual TV replacement. And as always, I hope you guys and girls enjoyed this, and if you did, then please support the channel by hitting the like and subscribe button. I really appreciate each and every one of you that does. Leave all your thoughts and your questions below. I always appreciate what you guys have to say and like to respond to you as often as possible. Please read more about this and the other article on site, and be sure to check back soon for much more information incoming from all the E3 games and all the new hardware that's inbound to us. Along with the new Xbox One S coming in August, I'll also be covering detail on the new AMD R480 card next week. That car's going to make a bit of a splash. You guys and girls take care, and I'll see you very soon on the next one. A new beginning.